Thank you very much. And good to see you all uh, again here. Uh, Dr. Fauci, I'm going to ask you a question. You know, last week the White House warned us that there may be 100 million cases, COVID cases, this fall because of waning immunity and other things. Uh, we don't know what variant it's going to be. Depending on the variant, uh, you know, one in 20 could end up on a ventilator. Of those, it could be up to 40 percent actually die. And we all know people who've died uh, for COVID. It's usually people who end up on a ventilator and have untreatable lung disease. Now, you briefed us last year about the active three trial, which is Vipdodil and Remdesivir. Uh, and it, because it doesn't appear that remdesivir does anything in those late-stage patients, Avipdodil may, Avipdodil may be the last remaining therapy uh, that we may have. Uh, and, you know, I and other uh, physician members of Congress actually have experience with some constituents who have recovered under the drug, under right to try. That, of course, is anecdotal. We, need, we do need more evidence than that. Uh, the NIH is commended to be taking on the risk of, uh, you know, studying this medicine from a small drug company. It's a very small company makes it. Uh, because nobody could have predicted that this was kind of the last drug standing uh, for late-stage COVID. But we're out of time now. I mean, the bottom line is, if we're going to have a surge in the fall, and, we, and right now we have no late-stage therapeutic for the person who's failed all other therapy on a ventilator in the ICU, uh, BART is going to need months to ramp up production of a therapeutic. Uh, so the question is, you know, have your – the problem right now is because – the enrollment has slowed down in Active 3, and I'm sure you're aware of that, because there just aren't that many people with Omicron who proceed to that, to that level. Uh, the question is, are your statisticians going to take an early look at that data to see if Avipdodil works or works adequately enough to authorize it, scale it up so that in this, this fall, when we have this potential surge, we will have a late-stage therapeutic? Uh, because we desperately need one. I mean, we still don't have something for those patients, and it's terrible. You know, you go to the ICU, you get put on, you fail remdesivir, you, there's nothing left. I mean, you call the family in for a meeting. Can you do that? Can you look at uh, some of the data? Yeah. yeah. As you well know, Dr. Harris, that the, the company who sponsors this has the opportunity to present the data to the FDA for an application for an emergency use authorization. The NIH and our clinical trials provide all of the resources necessary to do that. So I, it is, with all due respect, it's not an NIH issue of whether or not this gets submitted to the FDA for an emergency use authorization. But your, your, D, your DSMB is going to meet, I think, this month on right, this. Right, exactly. They could choose to take an early peek at the, at the results. Yes, it will. And, and one of the things that's very clear is that we don't interfere with the DSMB's uh, 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 the way they look at clinical trial data. I think that would be a conflict. So we would always welcome what they do, and if they look at the data and feel it should be an early look, then we welcome that. We have nothing right. against that, I promise you. Okay, good, because, I mean, they'll never get to 650. I think that's the end number. I mean, it's, they're just not enrolling right. patients anymore. It, it's a good news, bad news thing. Right, <laughs> that's, that's right. You understand it. So, Indeed. Uh, you know, thank you very much. Now, Dr. Tabak, I'm going to ask you something, because, you know, for years,